This is lab four in the dog. So we're finishing up the forelimb, the isolated forelimb, and you are need, you'll need to skin the rest of your foot. So you need to start at the elbow, make an incision kind of on the caudal lateral side is where I do my incision, and all the way down through the uh, carpal metacarpal pad and down to the toes. So you need to skin out at least one or two toes also. I did all of mine, as you'll see in a second when I take this off. But you need to do at least one or two, so that way you have, in case you messed up on one, you can try a different one. So you're going to take the skin completely off. And then you'll have a bunch of deep fascia, anabracheal deep fascia. And this is kind of what it looks like. And you'll just need to make an incision and take it off. Um, you may have to take it off in several pieces, several sheets, and it just kind of comes off like that. It's this very thick white fascia. And you can take off your arteries, veins, nerves with it on this side because we're doing muscles, so you don't need those. But just take it off and remove and discard that fascia. And then we will look at, so we'll move, this is the dorsal aspect of the paw here. And just in the carpal region, we'll have an extensor retinaculum. So that's just this fascia holding all of these extensor tendons you see going over the carpus. That's holding those in place. So it's just kind of this fascia right here. Then on the caudal aspect, you'll have a similar flexor retinaculum, which mine has already been all dissected out, so it's kind of falling apart. But the flexor retinaculum is going to hold all these flexor tendons in place in what's called the carpal canal. So that's going to be underneath this flexor retinaculum. So that's the fascia here. All right, we will move to the extensor group of muscles first. That's where you'll start. So you may possibly see the brachioradialis, just a tiny little piece of muscle that's going to go right along your extensor carpi radialis right here. In the cat, it's much more substantial, but in the dog, you may have a little tiny slip of muscle there. Mine did not really have one. Uh, so we'll start with the extensor carpi radialis, which is this muscle right here that's been transected. You will also end up making that cut, but you want to isolate it and find its tendon down here. And make sure you're isolating it before you transect, so you're not cutting more than one muscle. But you can transect it in the middle of its belly, and that will actually help you to see the supinator beneath it. So the supinator muscle is right here. It's kind of a little leaf shape. Or I think it's kind of a leaf shape right here, and that's the supinator muscle. The book tells you to also cut your common digital extensor, which is the next muscle next to the extensor carpi radialis, and I don't usually find that to be necessary, but if you need to or want to, you can cut this one as well. But this is the common digital extensor muscle, so you want to follow that all the way down, watch the tendon, and then go just below your extensor retinaculum. You don't have to cut through it, but just find the tendon as it exits underneath that fascia and follow it to see that it does branch into you know the four different toes. So it's extending all of those. And if you want to pick a toe that you're going to work on, uh, you can just kind of decide. I did the fourth toe. So you can pull it out and actually dissect it all the way down and see where it's inserting on that third phalanx. So, and there's also a little sesamoid bone. Hopefully if I peel this one up, we can maybe see it. Right here, this little shiny, so it's about the size of the tip of the probe right here. There's a little sesamoid bone in there, if you can find that. All right, then we will look, as long as we're down in the toe, actually I'm going to do these a little bit out of order, but this common digital extensor tendon comes down the toe and is inserting, but on either side of that, you see these little whitish yellow elastic pieces, and those are the dorsal elastic ligaments. In the dog, they're paired and they go on either side of that tendon. So, as long as we were there, we'll look at those. All right, we'll go back up. So now we're a little more on the lateral side. And next to your, so this is common, digital extensor, then you have lateral digital extensor right here. So it's a little bit smaller, is more lateral, and then you can follow that down as well. If you really want to follow the tendons, you can see where that goes also. So that's the tendons of the lateral digital extensor. And then we have ulnaris lateralis is the next one you'll find. So this is ulnaris lateralis 
or you can call it extensor carpi ulnaris if you'd like. That's also an acceptable term. All right, then we will move, we're gonna, I'm gonna turn it to the medial aspect here a little bit. We'll start again at the extensor carpi radialis, just for orientation, so this is on the cranial aspect of the brachium, and then we're gonna move just medial to that. So we are going to start with the pronator teres, which is right here. So there's your pronator teres, and the book is going to tell you underneath the pronator teres to look at the tendon of the biceps and dissect in that area. Um, if I can pull this back a little bit, maybe not enough to see. But you can see down there, I know there's pictures of this online, but the tendon of the biceps bifurcates. It's got two tendons of insertion, and then the brachialis tendon is gonna actually insert kind of in this hole where the probe is that's between those two tendons of insertion. So if you can see that, that would be great. All right, so moving on from pronator teres here. Then we will look at the, oh, I missed one on the cranial aspect, sorry about that. The abductor digiti one longus. It also has lots of other names you could call it. They're all very long, but this is it right here. Kind of a triangle shape, and it goes obliquely across the carpus here. So abductor digiti one longus. All right, now we'll move to the flexor muscle group. Let me just put some of these back where they belong. There we go. Okay, so then we will start with the flexor carpi radialis muscle, which is this small muscle right here. It's a, kind of a small muscle compared to your other flexors back here that you see. Flexor carpi radialis, and that's just caudal to pronator teres, so then we're just going to keep going. The next one you'll run into is going to be superficial digital flexor, which is actually kind of flat if you pick it up and isolate the side of it here. It's kind of flat, so that's superficial digital flexor. And there you're going to run into, when you follow the tendon for that, you're going to run into that flexor retinaculum that we had mentioned earlier. So you actually just want to peel up that first layer of flexor retinaculum and pull it away so that you can isolate the tendon of superficial digital flexor and follow it down to the toes. So you want to make sure and see that and they're extending to all those digits. So then you can just pull that down and out of the way. And we'll reflect that up. All right, then we will look at our deep digital flexor. So next, you're going to now cut through the rest of that flexor retinaculum here into the carpal canal. So the carpal canal is where the deep digital flexor tendon is sitting. So then I find it helpful to just use a probe and go underneath the tendon when you're trying to isolate this muscle and pull it out. So then you can actually just pull it out and you see all of this is all deep digital flexor. So you're gonna have three different heads and in the dog, the humeral head, and it's all of this. So very fleshy, very full. And then you're going to have a radial head, which is this little tiny thing right here. And then you'll have an ulnar head, which goes to the opposite side, which is this little one right here. So the other two heads are quite small. Humeral head is quite large in the dog. Then you can cut that. I recommend cutting it below where all of the heads come together just to keep the muscle bellies together because then you're going to reflect this part, the tendon of deep digital flexor and pull it down to see the interosseous muscles or interossei, I guess would be proper plural of that. But here you have these little individual muscles that are interosseous muscles in the paw. So you wanna see those. And then we will look at the pronator quadratus, which is underneath, so you wanna move your deep digital flexor out of the way. And you'll see in between the radius and ulna, so where my finger is in the probe, in between those two, is the pronator quadratus muscle. It's kind of shiny, goes in between those two bones. All right, and then we have the flexor carpi ulnaris, is the last flexor muscle that we will look at. And that has two heads. So one is smaller, kind of triangular shaped here, and that's the ulnar head. It has a longer tendon. And then the fleshier head, oops, right here, it won't stay up, is the humeral head. So humeral head here, big and fleshy, 
ulnar head, smaller, triangular, with a really long tendon. All right, and those were the flexor carpi ulnaris muscle, both those. All right, just a couple more things, I think. We'll move down towards the toe, and we have some ligaments to look at. So, if I can see if I can, my fingers are going to be in the way. Okay. So the palmar annular ligament is going to be the ligament holding those flexor tendons we looked at in place. So the palmar annular ligament is going to be here. And then you also have, this is the area where you have the flexor manica, where the switching of the deep and superficial tendons takes place. So make sure and look at your book at the image of that and understand what's going on there. You may not be able to appreciate it exactly on your specimen, but know that that's what that is. And then we'll move further into the toe, and you have the digital annular ligaments. So in the dog, you have two. There's one right here, and there's one right here. So this one is the proximal digital annular ligament, usually very shiny and easy to pick out. Uh, the distal one is a little bit harder sometimes, and it's just right here. You maybe can't even see it, but it's moving when I push on it. So that's the distal digital annular ligament there. And one last thing that we'll point out. I know you're going to do joints on one of your animals in your group, but um, only one because it's very destructive. But we can try and look at where the medial collateral ligament for the elbow joint is so that maybe you can have some help in finding that. So you're going to push all of your flexor muscles basically out of the way, and then it's where your biceps tendon is coming through, and it's just underneath that. So that's going to be the medial collateral ligament of the elbow joint. And then we'll flip it over to the lateral side. And the lateral one may be a little difficult to get to. Let's see. There we go. So if you go between your common digital extensor and your lateral digital extensor, should give you the best view of that. So this is your lateral, collateral ligament of the elbow right here. And that should be it for lab four.